in December 2018, Bharat Jagdeo, then opposition leader, had, this, had these words to say. And I quote him, Our incompetent government trudges in our incompetent government trudged in there unprepared and stuck us with a contract that would harm us for decades into the future. They sold our patrimony. Guyana, those was, were his words in 2018 to not only the coalition government, but to all Guyana. What he did since he went into office, has he corrected anything? <laughs> has he held a press conference to talk to Guyana and to talk to us about what is going on? Good night. I glanced at the news this morning and found out that the Turkish government helped Azerbaijan to build an international airport in one of their cities with an overall size of 60,000 square meters. It carries eight bridges. The terminal can handle 200 passengers in an hour. Two run away, 10,000 feet long and 200 feet wide, that can land any size of plane. This airport has every section you can think of that an airport has to have. You have to see this thing. How beautiful it is. Everything is modern. It has already achieved international standard. Miss Harris, it is equipped with automatic systems and has a brand new control tower in compliance with international civil aviation and transportation standards. This airport was completed in eight months and cost 39.5 million American dollars. Let me repeat that for you guys. <laughs> this airport finished in eight months and cost 39.5 million US dollars. Wow. Now, that's what you call an airport with efficiency and cost. Let me bring, let me bring you, uncle, to Guyana and our airport. Our airport is now going on eight years. We have already spent 170 million American dollars. It doesn't have a cargo section. No roads. No car park, no additional towers but the old one. No office spaces. Two bridges. Little space to handle one flight at a time. They have latrines for toilets, uncle. Yes, latrines, not toilets. Because the toilets you have there doesn't flush. And if it do flush, it runs over. Wow. This is we bright leaders in Guyana. What you said, Miss Harris? <laughs> and all this began with the PPP. Then it was taken over by the AFC, PNC, and now back the PP. Now back in the PPP hands, and the Mary Gorong continues. The circus continues with these clowns. And here were we minister, Tenegil, 
proud to tell Guyanese it encompassed 200 million American dollars. <laughs> wow. Yes, these are your leaders of Guyana. You all must go and see it for yourself. It's a set of patch up work. The PPP, the ACNU, and the KFC, all three of them paying 200 million US dollars and calling it a brand new international airport. I said this, the, the scanner broke down mm -hmm. just the other day. I don't know if that airport will ever meet international standard. Hmm. Oh, Guyana, you need to help me, you know. I need this help, Guyana. Every day is a new contract going out to do this and to do that. What was supposed to be done by the Chinese contractor on the airport to give us a brand new airport? <laughs> we still renovating and still patching. What a mess these leaders have us in. It makes me want to vomit whenever I remember CJIA. Not when I pass through it, but when I hear the name of an airport. That's how I remember to bring up back this airport story with you guys tonight. And now the Chinese saying they want till 2022 to finish the project. <laughs> you people will be flying through mess. Just Google it. Azerbaijan spent 40 million US dollars for a brand new sophisticated airport. Done it in eight months with every single thing. And we send we eight years now, we still renovating. We own. Yes, our renovation. Changing some walls, adding some walls, changing some zinc sheets. With a few other fine things, we spend $170 million. And we ministers say it's going to go past $200 million. <laughs> wow. And all jack man in this country quiet. That money, let me remind you guys, Glen Lal can build three brand new airports in all three the counties and become a millionaire. David Patterson came till to my office and defending the airport project. Telling us that the Chinese threw one million truckload sand Glen, And you know how much a truckload sand? Seven thousand dollar. At the time when he tell me that Guyana, you gotta get a truckload sand from T Mary right next to the to the airport. Two minutes away from the airport. Till to Guyana for seven thousand mm dollar. -hmm. This is how they're spending 170 million US dollars, these clowns. When I invited him to have a private conversation in my office because I didn't want to use language to him in front of my staff, he didn't come up to my office. He left quietly. I did tell him, Yala is past this nation, loud and bold in front of my staff. And I didn't say it that way. If you think that is how I said it, I didn't. I used some nice words to describe what they're doing to this country. Uncle, when the airport was initiated, President Jack Dale tell the nation how the new airport gonna be a hub for Africa. <laughs> he had Roots and Ben walking around Singing that same nonsense like a clung. Yeah, ma, we're going to hub. We're going to become a hub. Mm. Them hub, them hub, hubbing. All of you. Some people still asking me, Glenn, all them things you're talking is true? <laughs> Uncle, some intelligent people asking that also. I myself, Want, don't want to believe my own self. I say almost every day 
when we discuss the news for the next day in this newspaper? No, man, no. This is a dream. Glenlal, you're sleeping. This is not what is going on in this country. Every day I said that. 40 million US for Egil, na money. But we are run an international bank to borrow 1 million and 1.5 million US paying interest. It is sad what's happening in this land. Let's move on, Uncle. I was very happy to see so many people turn up at the Yumanayana for that fourth public consult consultation on the Yellowtail project. I am happy that you guys are waking up to the reality. I am told today Exxon and the EPA went to Anna Regina and they also had a massive group of people that turned up. I will try to get back the information that transpired today and talk a little about it on Friday. You guys remember I mentioned to you Monday how we are giving 10 days to analyze and study 7,400 pages of technical data? Yes. For a public consultation with Exxon and the EPA. Ten days ago. We. we carried a story, Uncle, yesterday, in which several oil experts said that Guyana is at disadvantaged position. What Exxon is doing to us, uncle, the export says it is impractical and impossible for Guyanese to have a proper public review or scrutiny with such a limited time frame. Not Glenn Lal saying this. I know I could not read 7,400 pages in 10 months, much as 10 days. <laughs> Even Exxon Mobil itself, the expert said, can't read 7,400 pages in 10 days. And it is not ordinary reading, uncle. It's not a fun book or newspaper pages, but with technical data. The expert says, this will give engineers and technical people a hard time to read and comprehend that amount of data maybe in a year. And this, they want me and you, uncle, to read in 10 days, to partake in a public discussion. It's like giving a five-year-old child an Oxford Dictionary to study in 10 days for a discussion. That's what they're doing to us. Uncle, some of the oil experts say this project should be put on hold so that proper evaluation can be done and the country would have a greater timeline to develop its monitoring capacity. That's what I believe and that's what I say. I fully agree with those experts and every Guyanese should also agree with them. While the experts are calling on Guyana to put this project on a whole to get our acts together so that we can properly monitor and put systems in place, uncle, to benefit all of us, ExxonMobil and the other oil players are calling for Guyana to give them the go-ahead. They want Guyana to green light the project, uncle. Yes. Hear the fancy language Exxon and the rest of them using to justify why Guyana should give them the go-ahead overnight with this project. I got to read it, uncle. I have to read this thing for y'all. How sweet it is. 
how convincing they think they will come over to Guyana and how deceitful they put it over to Alawi. Exxon and partners said in a statement and I read, please listen, in particular, without the project's revenue sharing with the government of Guyana, the associated potential for benefits to socio-economic resources would be reduced and gross domestic product, GDP growth, through associated Fiscal revenue will be affected. My God. Uncle and auntie. Uncle and auntie. These people believe that we does only speak patois. And we only know patois. We only understand and only them understand English. Only them alone. Mm -hmm. And them alone understand business. Those words, uncle, I don't want to read it back. Or you think I should? Should I get to read it back? Let me, let me take a moment and read it back. In particular, without the project revenue sharing with the government of Guyana, the associated potential for benefits to socio-economic resources would be reduced and gross domestic product, GDP growth, through associated fiscal revenue would be affected. You hear it? <laughs> Those words, uncle, simply means without getting this fourth project, our money, Guyana money, will be reduced, will be affected. The GDP will not grow, meaning your pocket ain't going to grow. That is what they are trying to tell us. Yes, the 2% will grow the pocket. What they plan to give us in that fourth project. So we must give them the go ahead to do it. So that we can benefit. Hmm. Them left out. Them left out the part about how rich they will get from this fourth project. Mm -hmm. We can get four billion per year and then we'll walk away with 196 billion American dollars every year from that project. That is what you call a fair deal. Four billion to 196 billion. I want to tell the oil people in a very bold and disrespectful manner. Y'all very, very disrespectful. And y'all is past the people of this country, including Glen Lal. Uncle, the PNC, the AFC, and the PPPC don't want to see and don't want to stop this type of insult and lack of respect to this nation. Let me ask this man. Is how much more y'all want to know? How much more you guys want, want to see? How much more you guys need to read what these people are doing to all of us? I would have to take a drink. I have to take a drink after this program. Ms. Harris, can you give me some water for now? Sure. And don't give me GWI water. <laughs> the people in Canal Number 2 beg me to come and see the condition and color of the water that is flowing through their pipes. One man sent me a photograph to show me what come out on his, on his foot and his skin. From bathing with the water, Mr. Sheikh Baksh. Ms. Harris, hear more of what the oil people say in them statement. I read again, Uncle. The Natural Resource Fund 
would be deprived of these revenues for sustainable development of the country and initiatives aimed at achieving the government's vision of an inclusive green economy. Wow. Yes, would likely be reduced. <laughs> Them telling us with those fancy words that the bank account we have in America holding the little couscous money from the oil would not be getting any more couscous money if this project doesn't kick off, uncle. <laughs> and how it will affect the development of your country. Yes, Miss Harris. You got to love these oil people. They know how to play this con game with fancy languages. I bet you, Miss Harris, those exact words that I just read there, Jack Dew and Harm on them will throw back at Guyana and say how Guyana gun can't develop if we not allow the Ford project to go ahead. How much you betting? <laughs> hmm? We can can't patch no more roads or build any streets. We can can't clean our drains. We can can't pick up the garbage. We can can't handle the crime. We can can't increase salaries. You can can't increase pension packages. You can can't get out any. You can can't get any more of that one time nineteen thousand and that one time twenty five thousand a year. You're going to be affected by this fourth project. How much money are you betting, Mama? You're going to hear all these words from them. Mm -hmm. I will play it for y'all when them use those words. Because I love this country. I love all of you. And I love the oil people and our leaders too. <laughs> Eggs on them talking to the leaders. Them got to be talking to the leaders. Because they are corrupt, incompetent, and is a set of clowns. Not me and you, Uncle and Auntie. Me and you reading true, and we seeing true under them skirts and them pants. What they plan to doing to us with our resources. The people say also, if we don't get that couscous money, uncle, we can't generate green energy, clean electricity. That money can give away the clean energy with solar and wind power generation. So I don't know what Mr. VP and Winston Brassington and Harman with Patterson and over the gas to shore and the Amelia Falls project. That was your come, that was your come on stream to generate different type of electricity. <laughs> Maybe for bright up the skies instead of Guyana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Or bright up them Pradoville. My uncle and auntie. I got to continue reading this flowery statement. The oil people them put out. Defending their position on why Guyana should grant this fourth project overnight. Man, the word so sweet. So sexy. If I was a lady, I would have taken off my clothes on the chair for them. Reading how sweet they're coming over. Them say, that they are of the view that Guyana desperately needs the project since the government of Guyana would be able to take advantage of the project revenues to fulfill its objectives, to create more job opportunities, address poverty, and improve the overall quality of life. <laughs> Oh boy, you hear those words? Mm -hmm. The 2% can address poverty, 
create jobs and make me rich overnight. Wow. <laughs> you got to love these people with their fancy language, man. Aye. Man, this 2% and profit, which is less than 11% total take from this oil contract, doing a lot for Guyana and its people. Eh, yeah, Miss Harris? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Suriname gets 62 and a quarter percent. And the last oil block carried to 84 and a quarter percent. Brazil 56 percent. Colombia 72, Venezuela 71. And we get 11. <laughs> it's so sad that this day and age, these foreigners believe that we brung black and yellow people Stupid so much mm -hmm. that we fall for these sweet talks, these propped up Nancy stories to make it sound as if Guyana and its people will, will be looking like heaven. <laughs> you know, Auntie, I remember during slavery, the white man used to carry copper and fool the Africans and tell them it's gold. They used to shine black stone and give it a color and tell them it's diamonds. <laughs> Capture and enslave them. Today, uncle, they are not using copper and black stones to capture us or to fool us. They're using flowery language with sweet words like revenue growth and associated fiscal regime, revenue, GDP growth. Like if we stupid, we dotish, we can fall for that. To entrap us, then enslave us. But not slavery like long ago talking about uncle. When they used to chain you and put you to work in the fields. This type of slavery, uncle, they are enslaving us financially. Mm -hmm. Enslaving us with the tomb foolery of public consultations and making we believe that we are in the Best position of life. Yes. So that we will benefit. Yes. Stealing our resources. Giving us next to nothing. And making us feel as if they are our saviors. Without them you can't eat uncle. Without them you can't develop auntie. Without them you don't have a country auntie. And they want us to buy that. The old slave masters take away the Africans' freedom. Now these slave masters want to take away we freedom plus we future. <laughs> now the enslaving we with this fancy word, sanctity of contract, and have our leaders who they compromise <laughs> using it. <laughs> sanctity of contract. It's sign in stone. It's set in stone. It's sign in blood. Contract can't change. <laughs> Guyana. Guyana would be able to take advantage, uncle. We would be able to take advantage of this project revenues to fulfill its objectives, to create more job opportunities, address poverty, and improve overall quality of life if we put a hole on this project. And build the capacity. Put systems in place. To benefit us. Not them. 
But uncle, when I read those words, I conclude that statement can only come from two sets of people. Corrupt politicians who are looking out for themselves and their families or international con men who are ready to take you down at any cost, who are ready to rip your clothes off your back to do your stuff. You know what stuff are talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You didn't give me the water. Not GWI water I want. I want diamond water. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love it. Auntie, they went a little further to warm a wee in the statement. You hear that? That if yellowtail is prevented, opportunities to boost economic growth through increased foreign direct investment in supporting goods and services in the time leading up to the oil production would be reduced. Man, this thing is so, so fancy to read it. I find it difficult to read it. Let me read it back. The statement says, if yellowtail is prevented, opportunities to boost economic growth through increased foreign direct investment in supporting goods and services in the time leading up to the oil production would be reduced. Would be reduced. <laughs> well, let it be reduced. Because we ain't getting nothing anyway. What I'm telling you there, uncle, if the project is prevented, your country will not grow. And how foreign direct investors coming to support the goods and services will no longer be interested in investing in Guyana. That's what they're saying. It's like a little threat. <laughs> what that mean? That, does that mean, mean anything to you, Josh? No. Huh? No. We don't need them to come and invest. Exactly. If we can get a fair share of our, our um, wealth, then we don't need them to come here and invest. Yeah. And in any case, they are not investing anything ExxonMobil. No. You guys did not invest anything in Guyana. Exactly. We you guys went, took our oil blocks to the international bank and collected all those loans on behalf of Guyana's oil block. And we are responsible for the oil, for that loans. Not ExxonMobil. Our oil is paying everything on those loans. Mm -hmm. So don't tell us about invest, investors and investments ExxonMobil. Don't bring that crap to us. We've been living without Exxon and these oil people for generations and we can still live a good life without them going forward. We need our fair share, uncle. And 50% royalty is reasonable. We don't need no 50-50 sharing. Profit sharing. Let Exxon take that. And push it where Pali put in not. 50% royalty. And let them take everything else. Let them keep all the jobs. And all the supply centers for themselves. They can make money with that too. Give me my 50% 50, 50 royalty. That's our smart businessman or any market vendor would accept. Royalty, 50% royalty. As a matter of fact, I was told to wear another 50% jersey today. So I'm having on that. That says demand 50% royalty from our resources. Hmm. Guys, royalty comes with no cost whatsoever. If they bring up a hundred barrel, give me fifty barrel and you take your fifty and take all the profit, whatever you make. Spend what you want to spend, do what you want to do. Go take loan by yourself and do what you gotta do. Give me me 50, 50 barrel oil every day and me good to go. Yeah. That's how simple it is. 
Who doesn't want a business like that, man? You don't want profit. You don't want to be, you don't want to hear about inflated bills. You don't want to hear what, what they're going to push in here. How they're going to can you there. How much they're paying for pipes. How much they're paying for, for field development plan um, projects and stuff like that. You don't need them kind of headache. You need your 50 barrel if they bring up 100 and you're good to go. Precisely. Thank you. Joshua, yeah. hear how they end them statement to Guyana. That same statement. I ain't unread it. Them say, if the unforeseen event that circumstances arose that warranted stopping the project mid-development due to government's disapproval, they said that they would abandon the project infrastructure in an appropriate manner. Consistent with the concepts laid out in the prelim preliminary end of project decommissioning plan. Oh my gosh. What is that? You know, you read these things uh -huh. and if you really didn't go to school, so man, you're in trouble. But what an art is a preliminary end of project decommissioning plan. I have to get some information on that and get back to your uncle and auntie. I really don't know. But what is important is what they said there in the other lines. If they don't get approval from the government, they have no problem stopping the project. I love that part. You hear that, uncle? This is where, and this is what I have been talking about since I started this program. We could have stopped Payara to get a huge change, to put big money in the pockets. But we vice president give them overnight without asking a single question or correcting anything inside that, pro that, that Payara project. Now, we have this fourth project. We can put a hole on. After all, the people said they don't have a problem putting a hold on it so that we can correct ourselves. Joshua, mm -hmm. you got any idea how much Guyana can rake in from now, from now on, with every project if we put a hole on them? Hmm? Yes. The first thing we can do, Uncle, is check and verify properly them nine, the more than 9 billion U.S. field development plan cost. We can demand, we can get full insurance, we can hire experts, to help us correct everything that went wrong in Lisa 1, 2, and 3, the Payara projects. We can take our time, uncle and auntie, and remedy so many things. Like putting the ring fencing provision in place. A decommissioning policy. Fix our local content properly fix the flaring fix the dumping of the produced water yep. to international standards <coughs> we can dent their bank books and wring their pockets uncle because they are in a rush to take all the oil overnight with a sweetheart contract Yes, the sun study contract. Mm -hmm. Uncle, if we only breaks them up now with this fourth yellowtail project, you know how rich this country can begin to get overnight? We don't have to live on borrow money to eat and pay salaries. We don't have to borrow money to build highways and infrastructure. All the money all the money to make Guyana into a Dubai overnight 
begins with this project, uncle. Yes, now I'm talking about. Breaks it up. And you will see how they will buckle. Our leaders have the testicular apparatus to do it, auntie. Let us wait and let us see. Over to you, Mr. Ali and Mr. Jack Dio, Mr. Harmon and Mr. Ramjatan. What do you think they will do, Ms. Harris? Hmm? You think they're going to put a hole on it? Mm. Hmm? And the reason I ask this question, uncle, is because of their silence and sneakiness in everything they do in this oil sector. You have been raped and robbed three times with Lisa 1, Lisa 2, and Lisa 3. Are you going to demand a review for the fourth project? Hmm? Where are your voices, man? I want to hear you guys. Hmm? Are you going to allow them with a fourth project to be raped and robbed for the fourth time, man? No way. Thank you, man. I was hoping to hear somebody's voice. Vice President Jack Dio had promised to release the production report. <laughs> How much I let me bring up every day, Uncle? So that every one of us can see how much oil they're pumping. Mr. Jack Dio promised to release the Payara Field Development 9 billion US report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For all of us to see, almost a year done, and Guyana, Guyana is with its eyes and hands wide open, still waiting to see that report. Are you hearing me, Josh? Mm -hmm. He and President Ali. Promise to be open and transparent in the oil sector. I am ashamed to play back their words of promise. <laughs> I'm too ashamed. I played so many times. You guys heard it before, man. How are we going to be transparent? Oh, we will not hide anything from the nation. <laughs> this, this is Jack Deer promise. Jack Deer promised to make the local content reports for the oil companies public. They a, they a, they, the oil company just hand your bill 500 million with no explanation. And to now we can get non local content re, re, report. He promised to use the right technology, Uncle, offshore to monitor. The measurement of our oil remotely. <laughs> Where is it, Uncle? He promised to design a roadmap to use a portion of the oil money to build sustainable industries. <laughs> we are here, nothing until now. He said he's going to outline, he will outline a benchmark. For corporate social responsibility. <laughs> Where are they? Where are they? He said he can establish and put in place a decommissioning and a depletion policy. Tomorrow we are carrying a story, we discuss it, that the local content policy. The draft document will meet Parliament till in December. <laughs> and this is, this is the local content. This is, this is not the depletion policy, you know, Ms. Harris, or the decommissioning policy. This is just the local content policy. The draft document will meet uh, Parliament by December. 
he promised uncle to outline a structure for what is to be expected in field development plans. <laughs> we can get another field development plan. If, if he okayed his fourth project with 9 billion US, where is that structure? <laughs> he promised to strengthen key auditing agencies, especially the office of the Auditor General Uncle, yes, to strengthen institutions that will be responsible for spending the oil money, including the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, and the Ministry of Health. <laughs> Did he strengthen anything so far? Hmm? Nothing. He promised to improve Guyana's capacity to monitor and record emissions offshore, particularly in the case of EPA. <laughs> EPA don't got nobody on to them. I don't think, as a matter of fact, I, I, think, I think they cut EPA budget this year. The most important agency. Right? He promised to provide funds to the EPA so that they can make unannounced visits to the floating ship out there while following, following safety standards. <laughs> when you hear these people talk, Uncle, you believe they are your savior. You believe they are the right people for the job. You believe that these people will make Make your future, man, better than when you're living in heaven. The things they're promising you all. He promised to hire technical experts needed to the, ministries of, to the ministries of natural resources, the EPA, the Guyana Geology and Mines, the Guyana Revenue Authority, and many others. Anybody hire so far? What a, what a promise man this is, eh? This is the best man you got for this land, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, Uncle, he will work to improve and make public Guyana's national oil spill contingency plan. Wow. <laughs> wow. Guyana contingency oil plan. Spill plan. <laughs> All I might wipe out. And you might not even hear about a plan, much less to see any, any improvement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He promised, he promised, auntie, he will review, he will review the massive tax concessions and tax holidays. For example, provisions in the oil contracts that allow tax exemptions on capital gains tax personal income tax, and withholding tax. <laughs> what, what is he doing? Business going on as normal, as usual, and nothing has been done. A matter of fact, more concessions are being granted. And here, review it. <laughs> oh, my. He promised to work towards updating policies, laws, regulations, regarding direct and indirect transfers of interests in offshore oil blocks. <laughs> Man, I gotta read back this one. I gotta read back this one. He promised, he promised to work towards updating the laws regarding direct and indirect transfers of interests in offshore oil blocks. <laughs> Granger and the Coalition transfer the Kaichur and the Kanji oil blocks shares in the twinkle of an eye like this. And the people that must sell it in Canada and make money. He couldn't sell here and let Guyana get taxes. The Coalition allow, well the PPP gave away the oil blocks and the PNC's Transfer the shares. That is what he's talking about. 
He said he update it. <laughs> he promised to establish a petroleum commission. The Vice President Jagdeo promised to update laws and regulations to address issues of ring fencing, transfer pricing, and other financial loopholes, health and safety of workers, monitoring of the environment, and so on. Allah, he promised Uncle. Mm -hmm. He promised to outline a vision for the oil sector following consultation with we, the Guyanese people, <laughs> the citizens, and he hiding from the press, much less we, the citizens. <laughs> he outlining a vision for the oil sector following consultation with RDs. <laughs> and he hide from the press, much less from you. He said, Uncle, he will work towards strengthening and increasing systems for reporting on decisions in all the oil and gas industry. <laughs> you heard that, Rash? <laughs> he will increase systems for reporting on the oil and gas industry. <laughs> He strengthened this by using Guyanese critic, auntie. Yes, the Guyanese critic. A man who has zero media credentials. <laughs> That's a promise, man. That's how he's been running this country from since he was finance minister in 1999 and throughout his present presidency on promises. I did ask you, I'll name one. One single thing that the vice president did that he put his hands on that is successful in this country under his stewardship. Nothing. Absolutely nothing he has done to uplift this country. But some people, but some people really become wealthy under him, uncle. Super rich, auntie. Y'all want me to call some names? Joshua? Nah. I ain't gonna call names now. Mm -mm. I got... I, I'm not gonna call the names now. It's in the open, though. These things are open secrets, uncle. In fact, I'll do a special program to list all of them. Mm -hmm. Listen out for the super wealthy gang. Mm -hmm. Jack Dave just the other day been in Texas and made another promise that how he will change all the rest of the oil contracts except ExxonMobil who own the Starbuck block with half of Guyana's oil field inside. Mm -hmm. I played his tape many times. Kaicho and Kanji drilling, CGX drilling, and everybody else drilling. And nothing has changed until now, uncle. This change, he said, will bring about more money in we pocket. Yes. Uncle, he can change it by 2050. When he become old, if he ever become an old man. When all the oil is done. That's when he's going to change these things. The coalition go in and then continue the same trend what Jack Dave cultivate in this country. They did nothing despite their promises too. With the exception of one thing. One single thing. I keep talking about it all the time. Uncle David Granger. Yes. He released the ExxonMobil contract. Yes. If that contract wasn't released under Uncle David, me and you, Auntie and Uncle, every Guyanese and generations to come would have disappeared from this earth without knowing how they left this motherland. Let me say again, thank you, President Granger. 
the coalition at least used to give us monthly production report. Jack Dale now turn around and hiding that. Is that what else he gonna hide from my uncle? If you ain't know, if you ain't know, let me tell you, everything he hiding from you. And this is the man Ali put to run the oil sector. He doing the Amelia Falls project, the gas to shore project, the hydro project, the kiss me ass project, and hiding everything. A matter of fact, he holding a little press conference and said don't record him. Are you remember man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's a good looking man, eh? Mm -hmm. A good looking man to keep far from. Far from where promise and promises is concerned. Let me remind you again, let me repeat it again. In December 2018, this Vice President Barajak Deo, then the opposition leader, said, and I quote him, Our incompetent government trudged in there, unprepared, and stuck us with a contract that would harm us for decades into the future. They sold our patrimony. <laughs> they sold our patrimony. Yes, incompetent government went in there unprepared and stuck us with a contract that would harm us for decades into the future. They sold our patrimony. <laughs> 